Hi, I'm Linda with paperboutique.blogspot.com and welcome to part two of my vintage series. Please visit my YouTube channel to see part one. We'll be building on techniques that we learned in part one. Well, this is what we're gonna concentrate on today, this particular technique. And it's on page three of this wonderful book that I mentioned in the first video. In the first video, we learned how to emboss blanks using the cuddle bug and embossing folders. And in this video, let me move this out of the way, we're gonna be using patinas on a piece of purchased vintage metal and we're gonna be making this necklace. Well, here are the supplies that we're gonna be using today and I'm gonna move this out of the way. We're going to be using these patinas and this particular kit came with all three of these, an amethyst, a marine, and a quartz. And today we're gonna to use the amethyst and the kit I showed you during the last video came with this beautiful blue, green, jade, and the moss. So for today we're gonna to be using the moss the amethyst and this particular color. Let me move that out of the way and then I'm going to bring in the blank that you'll also need is a vintage blank and I purchased this at Red Magpie Beads and I purchased all of the vintage equipment there so you're going to need that. You're also going to need what's called a reliefing block and this is to sand it down after we paint it. And the dark edge here is the heaviest grit, and the white is the medium, and the light gray buffs it. And we did more buffing last time. This time we're gonna use the white side and the, the heavier side. And you're also gonna need glaze. And this seals, once you've done this, you're gonna, after it dries, you're gonna go in and seal it. We probably won't have time to do that today because it takes time to dry and we won't have time to finish it. You can also use this glaze to dilute these particular inks to make them more like stains. You're also going to need paint brushes and please don't laugh, these are incredibly well used paint brushes. I don't paint with them per se, I do crafts with them so they look pretty, pretty bad. And just a, a quick tip, after you've used these opaque inks, take and wash them with water. Most cases the, it'll come out, but you might need to use a little paint thinner to clean them. Well, let's go ahead and get started. And oh, the other thing you're gonna need today is this piece of mat. And I, I keep saying this, I can't remember if this is a basil splat mat or if it's from Ranger, but I like it because glues and paints can wipe right off. So the first thing I'm gonna do, let me just turn this. I'm gonna do just really quickly, and I don't know if you can hear this, but you wanna make sure there's little mixing beads in there that they're very well mixed. And we're just gonna do, for purposes of demonstration, I'm gonna put this ink pretty close. And oops, I got two drops, which that's more than enough ink. And I'm gonna use this finer brush, and I just pick it up, and I'm gonna put it on there, and you can tell that that's a little thin um, a little too thin, but that's the consistency we have. So that's what we're gonna be dealing with. And then I'm gonna paint that. And you know, I have just a little, I'm gonna reach over. I have just a little piece of paper towel here and I'm gonna blot some of that off because I really don't want that heavy a coverage and it's fine to blot. This paint is very forgiving. And you're, you know, you're gonna want a pretty, pretty heavy coat. So I'm gonna do a couple of light coats and the reason I blotted it is I wanted to have a chance for it to dry because you need to have it dry before you can sand it. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna do, well, let me quickly do this other purple. I think we have time and I'll just do that and we'll put it aside for a minute. I'll talk about a couple of other things while it's drying. And then what I would do is I would just go ahead and use some of this, um, moss and I probably use a smaller paintbrush than this but I don't have one handy and then I just will paint the leaves and then I'd go ahead and paint the stems and you can see it'd be nice to have a, a smaller paintbrush 
and the green is going on a little bit thicker so I'm just going to add a little bit more and you can tell that I probably needed to mix it just a little and I like adding quite a bit and I'm not going to take the time to paint it all and I've got a little green there and I don't want green there so I'm just going to move that and then what you're going to do is you're going to set this aside to dry and you don't want it to dry too long because then it, it is very difficult to buff off but what I do want to mention to you is I discovered the hard way that if you don't like a color and you want to take it off you can sand most of it off or what you can do is you can use a lot of um, acetone actually and acetone will remove it but you have to work pretty hard to get to get the opaque ink off using acetone well that's not quite dry yet but while we're waiting for that to dry let me just put that aside and show you this is the project in case you didn't see the I don't want to get it in the ink in case you didn't see the video the first video we made these earrings and these were just brass um, they're vintage circles and we actually embossed them using an embossing folder and the cuddle bug and I wanted you to sh show you the final product and with this technique when we when you buff it off I use this gray side to get a real shine on that we're not going to do that today because this is let me bring this in this is the look that we're after well I'm going to close up my ink while we're waiting for this to dry and I want to show you I'm going to move it away so I can show you a little bit about the necklace and how to assemble it while we're waiting for it to dry once you have finished the necklace and what what I did is we use the purple hair and then this is the jade but the fun thing about these particular inks is they blend like an alcohol ink so you can see right here I used a little purple, I used a little blue, I used a little green and just blended it. They're very, very forgiving inks. And then you add a jump ring. And then what I did, I wanted to show, I want to show you this cute closure. Arlene from Red Magpie Beads showed me how to go in, how to how to make this. And this is just a piece of leather and a I think they're called crimp beads. I'm not a beater, so please forgive me. And these are split rings, and then this is the, the way that you attach it. And I thought that that was super cute. So you could do, for this, you could also do beads, you could do a chain, you could do all sorts of different looks. I also want to show you um, something else that you can find, and this is a black velvet one. But you can find these at craft stores that are already, I think you can see that in the frame, that are already finished and wrapped. These come in different colors. You can also find some leather that's already completed. You can um, find leather in beading stores in different colors too. So there's all sorts of things. You could also purchase a ready-made chain. It just makes this working with vintage so simple. Well, I think that we have waited long enough to to let it dry so let me move this out of the way and i'm going to bring it in and if we haven't waited long enough you'll soon see i think this first one is is pretty good so what you're going to do now and you can and you can tell that that's a really thick coat and like right here i'm going to go want to go in with a finer tip and you know touch that up so what you do is you'll take depending on your preference like in the the picture in the magazine they just did a light buff so they probably use the white and I like let me show you I like to take off a little bit more so I did the the darker side so what you'll do I think this one's still too wet you'll just go in and you'll see and you have to give it a good oh that's turning out really cute and then see you just buff as much off as you want and that's pretty much the look I'm going for I'm gonna try this one I don't think the leaves are done and I'm just going in and that one's thicker so I'm gonna gonna turn this and 
I think it's going to be easier if you just pick it up and you don't want to be too gentle. There you go. You can see. I hope you can see and I hope my head isn't in the way and I'm able to pick up some of that green with it too. There you go. And then you'll just go around and do that on the leaves. And if you decide that you want more purple for some reason, maybe I took off too much there. You can just go in and just paint it again and let it dry and buff it. It's just it's absolutely forgiving and you'll do that with the green and then you'll paint this and then just add a color on top of it you can mix the colors right on your on your um, mat here I'm hoping that you you can see that and then when you're finished you'll let that dry and then you'll just go ahead and seal it with this metal sealer and, and a paintbrush well, I'd like to thank you for watching and please visit my blog at www.paperboutique.blogspot.com for more projects and ideas. Bye-bye.